Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Canon T50. It was made from 1983 to 1989. It was the first in the T series. It's FD mount. Uh, it's manual focus, but just about everything else uh, is automatic. When I reviewed the EOS 750, I compared it to the T50 because of the lack of manual controls. But I revisited the 750 and found out if you put on a non-EF lens, the body defaults to aperture priority. You don't get that much control with this guy. It's program auto exposure only. Uh, the metering is center weighted averaging. It does a pretty good job. Um, and you can do a little bit of exposure compensation by changing the ISO speed. You push this silver button and then move the dial. Uh, the ISO is settable from 25 to 1600, so you have a bit of latitude. The only other way is to take the lens off of automatic mode and then select your f-stops manually. But when you do that with this body, it sets it to the flash sync speed of 1 60th of a second. One important kind of advance with the introduction of the T-series the Canon A series had horizontally traveling cloth shutters and this one introduced the vertically traveling metal shutter. The advantage there is you're traveling 24 millimeters instead of 36 so theoretically you can get a faster shutter speed. Canon didn't push it with this though. This tops out at a thousandth of a second and slows all the way down to two seconds. There's no bulb mode even if you're using their wired uh, remote or shutter button. On the upside, it takes two double A's. This one, the battery door is missing the contact piece. It was really corroded. Cleaned up okay, but that metal piece is missing, so I just put a piece of foil across the end of the batteries because they're one up, one down, and then taped it shut, and it works just fine. Battery check is one of the few selections up here. The other one is L, where it's at now. It's locked program, which is normal shooting mode, and then self-timer. It's got a 10-second self-timer that beeps, and then when it's two seconds away, uh, it beeps really fast. In the viewfinder, um, it has a matte field overall, then it has the micro prism, and then it has a split image. It's nice and bright. It's really easy to focus. Not too many indicators. It's got a green LED P, and if that's on solid when you do a half press, it's got a proper exposure. If it blinks slowly, I think it was like twice a second, um, that's your slow shutter warning. Use a tripod or use a flash. So that means it's going to be 1 30th of a second or slower. And then there's a fast blink of the letter P, and that means it can't get a proper exposure and it just won't fire. There's an M in the viewfinder that lights up when you take the lens off of A and manually select the aperture. Then there's a little lightning bolt flash icon in there um, that lets you know two things, um, that your flash is charged and when it's on solid um, that it can get the proper flash exposure. They made a specific flash for this body, the 244T, but I was able to use a 155A. It was made for the AE1, and it worked just fine. It's got these two extra contacts, mates up to the hot shoe here. Rounding out the features, um, if you hold down the button, uh, it'll do 1.4 frames per second continuous, and an odd thing, is even though the advance and load is motor driven, rewind is manual. It's got the normal kind of release button on the bottom. There were some interesting accessories that fit in here. Obviously there was the remote shutter control. Um, it's electronic so there's no way you're going to get a cable release in there. Then there was a wireless version of that, uh, I guess for wildlife and things like that and an interval timer. Some of the shots I did uh, with this Canon FD 50 millimeter, it's f1.8, it's the FD version of the Nifty 50, 
It's a common lens, but it's a really, really nice lens. Some of the shots that I did, I used this Vivitar wide angle. Uh, it's 28 millimeter f2.8. It's a pretty sweet lens, giant slab of glass in the front. It's beefy. Um, trying to find information about it. I don't know if you'll be able to see that as the aperture closed, shutting down. Sometimes these would get crud on the aperture blades and the body wasn't able to work the aperture. I have the opposite problem. This one works just fine when it's being controlled by the camera body, but I cannot get it off of the little green O that's the equivalent to A so that I can select the uh, manual f-stop. Usually, like the 50 millimeter Canon, there's a little button so that you don't accidentally take it off of A. I can't find a button or a slider or anything, but I also can't turn it. Um, so it works great when it's run by the body, but I was hoping to use this on some other cameras. So if anybody's got one of these and knows you know, maybe it's just stuck and I need to take it apart, or if there's some trick to getting this off the automatic setting, please comment down uh, below. Let me know how to do it, because I really, really like this lens. Um, last, my test roll was some Fuji Superior 400. Uh, it's been refrigerated. It was uh, about a year out of date, but not too bad. But I got some bizarre color shifts. Um, I think it's my chemistry. I've been using uh, Roly C41 chemistry because it's supposed to have a better shelf life than the Unicolor kit that I had been using. Um, but it's not that old. It hasn't had that many rolls through it. It's not like when I've been pushing my luck shooting ancient slide film or something. So I have no idea what the, what the deal was. But the color shifts are not the camera's problem. It exposed them just fine. So I think I'll try some black and white in this guy before I move on to the next camera. So I'll see you then.